Hey guys, great to be with you this uh, fine weekend. I hope uh, everybody is doing well. Usually Actatus handles a lot of the uh, indie game spotlights. He's got the uh, the Actatus hour uh, where he checks out uh, different games. But uh, uh, right now this game is available for Windows 8, which I have and he does not. And um, so uh, as soon as I uh, grabbed this game off the Windows Store, I, I just absolutely had to share it with people. I think it's amazing. Um, this is a uh, game dev tycoon. It's from uh, Greenheart Games. Uh, basically, uh, it's a, a small company by two brothers, uh, Patrick and Daniel Klug or Klug. Sorry, not sure which. Um, and uh, basically, their whole mantra is to develop games that are fun to play instead of mind-numbing money grabbers. That is from their website. Uh, their motto is less social, less vil, more games. And uh, if this is uh, what they've got to offer, um, I'm, I'm on board. I'm all for it. Can't wait to see what comes next. Which is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like game gameception because uh, it's pretty much what you hear after you uh, start making some good games in this, in this game. So uh, basically what this is, is it's a simulator that takes you back to the 80s, kind of the dawn of video games. You are creating an upstart company that creates video games. You start off in your garage. Uh, and you work your way up from there. Um, it's it's great, great game. Uh, there is a light version that you can, uh, or a, and a trial version you can get from the Windows Store. It's now available for the uh, Surface tablet, um, and uh, they are working on getting it uh, on Steam. So uh, if you see this, you love it, go to Steam and vote for it. Tell them you you pick a copy up. Um, and really share this with your friends because uh, these guys have worked hard. It's a great game and I'd love to see it uh, get out there more. So let's get started. Um, right now I've just finished naming our company, RACP Games, with my player name. Uh, I'm going to switch the hair to something a little closer to mine. And my favorite color is green, so I'm going to go with the green, uh, green sweater there. You can see the different choices, but uh, green is fine. So, um, right now we've got a cash surplus of 70k to get our startup going. Um, I gotta get a couple of games going. I haven't played this game a whole heck of a lot. I'm still learning a lot about it. Um, but uh, so far it's been amazing, amazingly fun. So uh, let's let's check this out. So we're basically in our garage in the uh, in the 80s. Uh, time is ticking up here. You've got um, uh, different um, ratings of your development of your game and what project you're working on. Up here you've got uh, how much time has passed and what your cash is, which is ticking away, so we should uh, we should get this going. So uh, if you click anywhere, you're going to come up with a menu. Uh, we're just going to de develop a new game. Uh, you've got topics, genres, and platforms. And... Uh, and what you're going to title your game. So right now you start out with a limited amount of topics, but you can research and unlock. You can see how many spaces there are. Basically, as time goes, you research um, basically more topics. Um, as you work on your games and uh, contracts, and we'll see later, you get research points that you can spend to research different things, and these are one of them. So um, right now, let's just... Uh, Let's just do a medieval RPG to get started. So we'll go to medieval. Genre is going to be RPG. Then you pick your platform. Right now we've got the G64 and the PC, and uh, it doesn't take uh, doesn't take long to realize the what the analogies are of this. Uh, right now, the uh, market share is with the G64. So I'm going to start our first one off with that one. Uh, right now, our project is going to cost uh, $25,000. Uh, we're going to name it, let's name this uh, the Knights of Blarg. So that finishes our game concepts. Now we're going to start working on the game. We can work on text-based graphics. You know, I don't know if anybody remembers the old MUDs out there. It was good times. Uh, or, uh, or Zork, even. Uh, but you know what? Let's do 2D graphics, version 1. It's going to cost us an extra 10k. So right now we're up to 30k, and uh, let's do it. Each month, uh, your cash goes down eight, uh, like $8,000, which basically covers your, your bills and whatnot. Um, so we've got Knights of Blarg, which is a medieval RPG. We've got 
uh, our trackers up here. It's going to track the number of bugs we have, uh, the number of points, uh, design points we have, which basically is a rating of how, uh, how good the design is, number of technology points, which basically uh, shows how uh, technologically advanced it is, and then we've got research points that we can spend later to unlock uh, different uh, game engine pieces and topics and whatnot. But right now, what we've got to do is uh, we've got to uh, figure out how much time we're going to spend uh, developing the engine, the gameplay, and the story and quests. So uh, actually right now, I'm just going to go full bore on everything. And uh, as we're developing it, we're basically we're building up more points in there and making it better. Um, so then development stage two pops up and we've got dialogues, level design and artificial intelligence. And they're all level one because we just started out, but you know, that's okay. Um, but since in an RPG, we really need to focus on level design and dialogues and not so much the artificial intelligence. That's what people want to see. We'll click okay. We're gonna, you can see our trackers going up there. We're getting more points uh, built up. Um, so we have development stage three, which is the last stage. And in this stage, we, uh, we have world design, graphics, and sound. And then uh, we have features on the side that we can check or uncheck, and that will grow more based on what engine we're using. Um, and in this one, I think we're going to invest heavily in world design graphics and not so much in the sound. It doesn't really matter right now. So we're going to finish this up. You can see the rest of the points going up. We've got a few bugs we're going to have to work out. Here we go, we've got 23 research. We're gonna start killing these bugs. You can see the bubbles going up, killing them. We've got 12 design and 11 technology. And if you let it sit there for a little while, you can see it'll keep, basically we're polishing the game up the longer we take. Uh, and when you're ready, just click finish. Um, and I've waited so long that our bank account is in the red. Uh, if your bank account goes in the red, um, you can overdraw up to 50,000. If you go below 50,000, you'll go bankrupt. But uh, I think we're going to be okay because we're going to start making money here. And it's going to come up and tell us uh, level uh, our design level is 13, technology level is 12. And then we're going to gain uh, experience points based on how much time we spend on each of these levels. And uh, then it gives you experience points. So right now I'm almost halfway through level one. And you can trash the game or release it. I'm not sure, I guess, if you just wanted to get, um, if you just wanted to get research points or whatever, I guess you would trash it. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to tra uh, trash the game after you spent so much time working on it. So uh, maybe somebody can let me in on that, uh, leave a comment or or tweet me or whatever and let me know why, what the advantage would be in that. Uh, so uh, we're done, we're gonna release the game. And uh, here in a second, our game reviews are gonna come in. So it's the first reviews for our newly released game, Knights of Blarg, came in. Let's see, we're gonna get reviewed by the magazine. Uh, Star Games gave us an eight. Informed Gamer gave us an 8. I love the titles of the magazines, by the way. Game Hero gave us an 8. And All Games gave us a 7. That's actually not bad for uh, for our first game. So uh, now the news has come out. RACT Games, newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Knights of Blarg. The game received favorable reviews. With such a good start, RACT Games is sure to gain fans quickly. Let's hope. So uh, now our sales are going to start getting tracked up here in the corner. And uh, you can see in the first week we sold 4,127 units, opened up the charts at 30. Eh, not too bad. We got 28.9 thousand in sales and we gained 17 fans. Um, not bad for first release. <laughs> and now it's telling us we have 17 fans. I like it. So now we can click um, and we can do some research. We've got 23 research points. We can research a custom game engine uh, or a new topic. And um, right now, let's do a new topic. Let's do uh, let's do fantasy. Start research. And as we're selling uh, selling uh, units up there, we're gonna keep making some money. 
Uh, industry news says recent market studies suggested that Gav Gavador's G64 is steadily outselling competitors for the PC sector. Consumers prefer the lowest price, the lower price, greater availability, and flexibility hardware, flexible hardware configuration over their home computers. I can read so well tonight. My college education is uh, it's killing me. Experts say that this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. Mm, not sure about that. So, uh, so we're researching. You can see the time is passing. Uh, Knights of Blarg has achieved the company sales record with over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of RECP games. Yes, it is. Uh, as you can see, our cash is, is going up fairly quickly. And uh, we're about done researching. So we've researched fantasy. So you know what? Let's, let's jump into this. Let's do this again. Um, let's see. Let's do a military. I hate to just drop right into the cliches, but, you know, whatever. Let's do a military action. Um, yeah, we'll do the G64 again. Why not? Let's call this Guns of Defiance. It's going to cost us 30k to start out with. We're going to use the 2D graphics again. I've never used the text-based graphics. I, I've always felt like the extra 5k is, is worth the investment. So let's get to work on it. Uh, since this is an action game, story and quests, nobody's going to care about that. So we're going to drop this down and focus a lot on the engine and gameplay. There we go, our bubbles are shooting up there. Love those little bubbles, it's very cool. Um, development stage two for Guns of Defiance. Dialogues are not a big deal. Artificial intelligence and level design probably is a little bit more important to this type of game. Basically, we're making an early shooter for the computer. Uh, sometimes we're gonna stop and scratch our heads uh, here we go, industry news. According to rumors, the Japanese company Ninvento, <laughs> I love these names, is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Ninvento is known for widely successful arcade game Dinky King. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. Uh, many industry experts doubt that the home gaming consoles will take off. We're going to see what Ninvento will deliver. I'm going to probably guess that maybe a uh, home console is going to do a little better than people think. I don't know about you guys. Okay, so uh, world design is not really as important, so we're going to sink uh, our time into sound and graphics. Knights of Blarg is off the market. It sold 19,915 units and made 139, almost and a half thousand in sales. Not bad. Not bad for a little dinky guy in, in a garage. I'll take it. So we're going to work these bugs out and polish the game some more. There we go. Let's finish it. Uh, let's see. Almost level two in a few things. Got a new record. It's 13 technology. We got 10 design in there. Let's uh, let's release that game. First reviews are in. Let's see how how we do. Six, not bad. Six star game. Seven for informed gamer. They call it beautiful. Game Hero gives it a six. They like it. And uh, all game says it could have been more. Uh, you know what? Six and sevens. Uh, it could be worse. Could be worse for a. Uh, shooter in the early days. So uh, our sales are going to wrap up there. Looking good. So at this point, uh, we get an email or letter, telegram. <laughs> I can't, honestly, I'm not entirely sure how we communicated back in the 80s. I guess phone calls and, uh, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I was a kid back then. I don't remember. Uh, basically, um, it's somebody uh, who does who's in the contracting business, and uh, they're willing to offer us contract work to uh, to just make some more quick money on the side. And how that's done is clicking on the menu again and going to contract work. 
And uh, basically how it works is, is we got four weeks to, to basically generate six design bubbles and eight technology bubbles. If we can do it within those four weeks uh, period of time, we'll get $15,000. If we can't, they're gonna, we're going to get a penalty of 6000 So um, usually there's two or three in there with different uh, type bubbles. There's no way I'm going to make that much. Uh, but we'll give this a shot. We'll, we'll accept the contract. And these change about every six months or so. Uh, right in the middle of this, it says uh, Ninvento has confirmed the recent uni um, rumors, and they're going to bring out a gaming console called the TES early next year. Nice. I I remember something similar to that. So uh, here we go. We're going to try to try to fill these up. Time is ticking down. Looks like we might do it. We uh, get a couple of research points while we're doing that, and we're done. They're going to transfer 15k to our account. We've got 185k. Um, clients happy. They'll have some more contracts later. So uh, awesome. That's what I like to hear. Uh, let's go ahead and research. Um, let's research sci-fi. There we go. You can see our sales are really dropping off. We're going to sell maybe 20,000 units of Guns of Defiance when it's all said and done. Still not too terribly bad for a garage startup. Uh, we've uh, finished up sci-fi. So uh, game Guns of Defiance is off the market. Sold almost 20,000 copies. Got 138,000 in sales. I'm going to call it good there. Um, Hopefully we can uh, do some more of this. I'd really like to uh, show off some of the later stages, especially uh, once we get upgraded uh, to the new office. We get to hire staff. Uh, eventually you get into a larger office. You can have a research and development section. Um, you can start developing MMOs. You can start making uh, expansion packs for those MMOs. You can start making sequels. It all depends on what you research. Um, there are so many uh, different uh, consoles that's come out throughout history. Um, and, and whatnot that you can buy licenses for and put out games. I mean, it really, um, really opens up. And uh, if I wouldn't talk so much, we probably would have seen a little bit of that. But uh, um, r really, guys, uh, if you like what you see, download the trial version. Uh, check it out. Um, like I said, it's definitely expanding beyond Windows 8. Uh, there's a Windows 7 demo that's coming out for it. And uh, they're in the middle of trying to get on Steam. Uh, these guys... Uh, it's, it's awesome when you buy the full version, you get a really cool message from them. Uh, it really looks like um, they put their heart and soul into this game. And, and really, it's no secret that, uh, that basically we've grown up wanting to be filmmakers and game designers, and Actatus is working on that right now. And so these guys are really living that dream. And so really, we'd love to support uh, people like that that really care about what they're doing and, and really seem like uh, they're really good to the customers. So uh, that's Game Dev Tycoon, guys. Um, like I said, hopefully we'll have some more um, episodes of this so we can get a little farther down into it. But uh, for now, that's going to be it. So be well, and uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Uh, take care.